back to my class. You know that I am Halimuni San, teacher and junior lecturer of Ahlebad High School and Junior College. In today's class, we will discuss the fourth chapter that is from economics first year and named as production analysis. Here in this chapter, having the discussed the demand accepts of the price theory, we now proceed to discuss the supply accepts of the price theory. So here it relates to the production of goods and services. In this theory of production, we will see the relationship between the inputs and outputs. Here this chapter is deal with the production analysis and law of variable proportions and law of return to scale, economies of scale and law of supply, cost and revenue analysis. So first we will go with the concept of production and factors of production. In concept of production and factors of production, first we have to understand the meaning of production. So first we will discuss about the meaning of Production. Here production is very important economic activity exactly so the term production is used for the creation of a good or an activity of making some material. Here the growing of wheat or paddy crop by farmers and manufacturing of cloth or radio sets etc. in the industrial sectors are often referred to as Production. So in economics the word production indicates the process of the transformation of inputs into outputs. Okay. So here the inputs are what a firm buy and output is what the firm sells. Okay. Here the production is defined as the creation of utilities of the goods and services to satisfy the wants of the consumers. Exactly. So this is the meaning of production. Now we will see the factors of production. So here in factors of production, the process of producing goods in the modern economy is very complex. Exactly. So here a good has to pass through a many stages until it reaches the consumer's hand in a finished form. Okay. For the production of goods and services, there must be excess factors of production and these may be the natural and man-made. Okay. So here there are the four factors of production and these are land that is denoted by N, labor that is indicated by L, capital which is denoted by K and organization which is identified by O. Okay. Here the total production in a country depends upon the quantity and the quality of the factors of production. Exactly. With these features of these factors of production are presented here. See this all. First is land that is generated by N. Here the term land is does not mean by soil or earth surface alone but it refers to all the free gifts of nature which include the natural resources such as forest, water, air, climate, minerals, fuels, etc. are there. So, in this we will see first the characteristics of land. Here the characteristics we may list the following characteristics of a land as a factor of production. See this. After land here labor which is generated by L. Here the term labor means the mental or physical exertion directed to produce goods or services for getting income. Exactly. So here labor is the active factor of production with the combination of labor only land and capital will be in use exactly so in this labor we have this all the characteristics of labor and the division of labor and advantages of division of labor and disadvantages of division of labor here so first we will discuss about the characteristics of labor in this that the identify of the characteristics of labor are labor is inspirable from the laborer himself and it implies that the labor is sold but the laborer cannot be sold by himself. Second one is that the labor is highly perishable in the sense that the day's loss of labor cannot be stored and so it has no reverse price. Okay and third is that labor has less mobility. Fourth labor has a very weak bargaining power and fifth is that the labor power differs from the laborer to laborer exactly and labor may be classified as unskilled labor, semi-skilled labor and skilled labor here. 
Here initially the supply curve of labor is upward sloping and at a higher level of wages that it is backward bending. Get it? So after the characteristics of labor, now we will see the division of labor here. It is an important feature of modern industrial organization and it refers to the scheme of dividing given activity among the workers in such a way that each worker is supposed to do one activity exactly so here no labor produced to complete a good here division of labor increases the output per worker on account of higher efficiencies and specialized skills exactly adam smith identified and explained the division of labor in his view after the division of labor now we will see the advantages of division of labor so here in advantages of division of labor here the increase of productivity of labor and production exactly then the inventions and discoveries are facilitated and saving in time absolutely correct then the diversity of employment and increase in skills and a right mind in the right place exactly and at last the large scale production is possible so all these are the advantages of division of labor here now we will see the disadvantages of division of labor in disadvantages are that the leads to monotony of course and retards human development and loss of skills and possibility of unemployment and to the mobility of laborers here so these are the disadvantages of division of labor after the labor now we will discuss about the capital after labor capital which is denoted by k here so here we may define the capital as that part of a present wealth of an individual or a community which is used for for the production of wealth so here capital means the stock concept yield the periodical income income here the flow concept here the capital is nothing but a produced factor of production in generally here money is treated as capital exactly so here money is spent on plan on machinery tools raw materials buildings etc so this is called as capital here the supply of capital changes and capital has mobility exactly so in this first we will see the classification of capital here here the capital can be classified into the real capital then the individual capital and social capital after that the fixed capital and the variable capitals at last the tangible capital and intangible capital now we will see detail all the factors of capitals and classification of capitals here first the real and the human capital here the real capital refers to the physical goods that is buildings plan machinery etc get it so as against this the human capital refers to the human skills and ability get it so in individual capital and social capital here the individual capital is the personal property on the other social capital is what belongs to the community get it as a whole in the form of road bridges etc you know very well this one when come to the fixed capital and variable capitals here the expenditure include on machinery and buildings in the production process is called as fixed capital and the amount spent on purchase of raw materials daily wages to laborers and the electricity charges etc are known as the variable capital tangible capitals and intangible capital here the tangible capitals may be precised by the sense where as intangible capitals is in the form of certain benefits and rights example good way or the patient size a sector are they come in the tangible and intangible capitals get it the classification of capitals now we will see the importance of capital here the point out the importance of capital are they so see this importance of capitals after the importance of capital now we will see the capital formation 
Here the capital formation denotes the increase in the stock of real capital in a country. So here the capital formation involves the making of more capital goods such as machines, tools, transportation, equipments and the electricity etc are they. So which are used for further production of goods and here the savings and the investments are essential for capital formation exactly. So after the capitals knowing in detail now we will see about the organization. So here after capital organization which is denoted by O and it is also called the enterprise okay. Here the organization is required to organize or to manage all the production activities. So here organizer is the person who will see the organization get it. So they must be some fact mobilized to all other factors and to combine them in the right proportion and to use the right technology and to produce the maximum output at the least cost and to bear the risk involved in it exactly. So this factor is known as organizer. He has also been called as an entrepreneur get it. So after the organization now we will see about the technology which is denoted by T here. The expenditure on research and development that is R and D promotes the technological development exactly. So here the technological advancement in production process not only improves the production methods but also the skills of laborers and entrepreneurs and also it helps in the optimum utilization of capital in business. So here all these are the factors after factors of production now we will see the production function it concerned with how the various inputs are combined in order to produce some amount of productivity by the producer and it shows the transformation of inputs into outputs at a particular time period here and it represents the physical relationship between the inputs and the outputs okay here output take the form of goods or services and inputs are different factors of production that is land labor capital and enterprise exactly so here the production function can be expressed mathematically as this see after production function now we will see about the law of variable proportions here in the short run some factors of production can be varied while some factors of production cannot be varied so here the former are called the variable factors that is labor raw materials are there and the latter are called the fixed factors that is capital land and organization etc come in this so in the short run here the output can be increased by increasing the variable factors exactly so when the variable factors are combined with the fixed factors the proportion between the fixed factors and the variable factors will undergo changes exactly this led to the situation known as the law of variable proportions get it here the law of variable proportion has been developed by the 19th century economist named as David Rachaud and Alfred Marshall but this was later developed by the Steger and F. Behem and Paul A. Samuelson. So this law states when increasing number of units of a variable factors is applied to the fixed factors and total output first increase at an increasing rate then at a diminishing rate and initially decreases exactly. So the law is also known as the law of diminishing returns get it. Now after this we will see the assumptions of the law some assumptions are here see this. Now the assumptions of the law after this we will see the explanation of the law here. The law can be explained with the help of a hypothetical illustration and suppose just to imagine that a farmer has 10 acres of land to cultivate and the factors of land and capital are assumed as fixed factors of production 
and labor as the variable factor. So here land is not shown in this table and it is a fixed factor that any change in the number of laborers will change output also exactly. So the changes as a result of change in the labor and in the total and average and also in the marginal production are shown in this table. See this one. After seeing this table to understand better see these curves very keenly and observe that. Here after observing now we will discuss about the stages stage 1, stage 2 and stage 3rd. The fourth stage is that the increasing returns. In this stage the total product increases at an increasing rate and both average product and marginal product is also increased in this stage. But marginal product reaches to its maximum. When third unit of labor is used and APE reaches to the maximum at the fourth unit of the labor and here the AP is equals to the declining the MP here and at a point E both MP and AP curves are intersecting in the figure from O to Q stage is known as increasing returns and under this stage here TP is greater than MP and MP is greater than AP. Get it? Here TP means total product, MP means marginal product and AP means average product. Okay. Now come to the second that is called as diminishing returns. After the stage of increasing returns, the stage of diminishing returns will take place. Exactly. So this is also known as the law of diminishing returns. Okay. Here the diminishing returns state start when the average product is maximum and it continues up to the level of zero marginal product and maximum total product. Here the table has shown these stages when the workers are employed from 4 to 7. So here the from Q to Q1 on O axis shows the diminishing return stage and in this stage only the total product increase at a diminishing rate and the average and the marginal product decline. So in this stage TP is greater than AP and AP is greater than MP. So here the production is portable only in the stage of diminishing returns that is stage second. Now come to the stage third which is known as negative returns. In stage third that is negative returns when the firms continue production beyond the second stage and then that the marginal returns will be negative. So in this stage the total and average products decline and the marginal products become negative. So that here the TP is greater than AP and AP is greater than MP. So here the employment of the eighth worker causes a decrease in total product from 60 to 56 units and make the marginal product minus 4. Get it? So here any rational producer or firm should not stop the production in stage 1 exactly and continue in stage 3rd. Why? Because here the producer or firm will be in equilibrium only when the total production is maximum and the marginal production is 0 at the end of the second stage. Get it? So after these stages now we will see the law of return to scale. By this we will end up our today's class and we will continue this topic in our next class. So thank you.